Welcome to Fundamentals of Argument. We're going to look at conditions necessary for argument as well as what a claim is, four kinds of claims as well, and then touch on definitions of three other terms, resolution, issue, and controversy. So we'll start with what conditions must be met before people can argue. That sounds like a funny um, thing to talk about. It seems like people argue quite naturally. Um, we grew up arguing, and that's really good news when it comes to this unit because there's not going to be much that is going to be uh, outside of your experience because you have argued before and argued since you were probably one. Um, you will simply be putting some fancy terms on things you're already pretty familiar with, and that starts in this particular um, unit. I know as a teen that my sister and I argued uh, for most of our teen years, and I would often scream the truth into her ears um, to try to get her to assent to something that she should have known was true, and she would simply be going, la, 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 to avoid the truth. Um, I was making an argument, uh, and we were, anyway. So what is one precondition? Some controversy or disagreement exists between them. It has to be, there has to be something to argue about. In other words, we're really getting down to some pretty obvious stuff here, um, but it's going to be important. So the controversy is not trivial, at least to the participants. If it were trivial to one of them, the argument would not last long. You try to get a rise out of somebody and you um, start an argument and the other person um, doesn't care about that argument, the other person would probably just admit it or find that it's not even worth arguing about. The argument would not go on for long. Um, the ascent of the other party is desired. One cannot simply abandon the situation. That's a precondition, too. Um, there are a lot of things that one could argue about, but um, why bother? Um, why win, say, the other person's ascent when, um, you know, it just doesn't matter what the person believes. It's just not that critical right now. Um, if you want to argue that uh, you're about to be hit by a bus, um, that would be critical, and um, you would hope you'd win that argument fairly quickly. Um, the assent is desired only if it is freely given. Um, that is out of respect that we would have for one another. If your boss uh, came and wished to argue that... Um, this particular book is better than another book and you disagreed with her, you might nevertheless still agree with her uh, verbally um, because of that uh, inequitable situation there. Um, if there's not a level uh, playing field, then sometimes we feel like um, perhaps the other person's assent uh, wasn't freely given, but out of... Um, out of some need um, in that power arrangement. So our desire for confidence in the results requires that condition, though. If we detect that there's an inequitable power arrangement that could influence the results, we can't have confidence in the result of that um, argument. No easier means exists for resolving the disagreement. Let's say, for instance, that one party to the argument insists that it's a sunny day, the other says that it's cloudy. Um, they could argue about it all day, or they could simply walk to a window and look out. So um, that would be an empirical method of resolving that particular argument. Empirical meaning it's a, a form of knowledge um, that involves our five senses. Um, epistemology is the study of what we can know, and empiricism is uh, a branch of that uh, um, philosophy that... that that uh, epistemology um, that involves things we can know just by our five senses. Um, so if you can look out a window, you have used empirical methods to resolve the argument. We can't consult a universally recognized authority. A comma should go there. No, it shouldn't. And you could go to an English teacher and um, hopefully both of you would feel confident in the result of that, um, uh, that appeal to a higher authority. Um, you could challenge that and say, well, I wasn't so sure Mr. Stevens knew that anyway, so let's go take it to another English teacher, or let's go look it up in a, you know, in a, a grammar book or something like that. But if you both um, 
uh, agree that a, a particular authority is uh, there to um, to decide the issue, um, then that would be the end of the argument. And we could also, um, if we can deduce the answer with certainty from what we already know, um, then that also would resolve the argument. So those are some things um, that would uh, that need to be in place in order for arguments to happen. Some things are agreed on. Even if we say that um, it's a sunny day, no, it's cloudy. Um, we have to agree on something. We have to agree that it's a day, like it's not nighttime, um, because we know at nighttime the sun is not shining. So um, there are fundamentals uh, beneath the surface that we are agreeing on, even though it may be tacit or implied. So um, those are just some things that we need to have in place before we can argue. Um, now, as far as the parts of an argument, the claim is the most important part. It's the first building block. Uh, it's what we want uh, a reader or a listener to accept. There are four kinds of claims that we uh, normally talk about, and the first is a claim of fact. It involves some kind of description. It's um, matters that in theory can be described or verified independently um, by others. Um, an example would be in the year 2000, you probably remember this from recent history, um, George Bush received more votes than did Al Gore in the presidential election in the state of Florida. Whoever carried Florida, the election was so tight, would carry the nation and the election. And this is a claim of fact made by Bush and his people that he received more votes than Gore in Florida. Gore did not um, consent to that claim. He disputed it um, for a long time. And um, so it, it got in, the courts got involved um, in trying to resolve it. The claims of definition involving, they involve interpretation. They're not always just a matter of going to a dictionary to see if you've got the right definition for something. Um, uh, definitions are not neutral. They're not always just in dictionaries. And here is a claim of definition. Abortion is murder. We've got the word is there, which often involves a claim of definition, but you can see how it's in, in interpretation. It's, it's a, a sort of a loaded claim. Um, and let's see, we've got a hanging chat is a vote is another example of a claim of definition. This again is Florida. This is a claim made by uh, Al Gore and his people that when the recount began in Florida, they discovered many votes that were not counted because the Chad, the little piece, the punch card um, that left the punch card when it was punched, never came completely loose from the, um, the little ballot there. And so um, he claimed that those votes should have counted because a hanging chat, after all, is a vote. That claim was disputed by Bush. Bush said it is not a vote. Uh, the rule is that the, um, the little chad must come completely loose. And Gore said, oh, come on, that's a technicality. The indication, um, the intent is clear that, um, that the person intended to vote. And besides a lot of those, uh, and the reason he was advancing that argument was because many of the discounted ballots were um, would have been votes for him. A third kind of claim is a claim of value, which involves judgment, um, or you might say involves appraisal or evaluation. And uh, the United States Supreme Court is biased. That is a claim of value advanced by a lot of Al Gore's people once the Supreme Court finally decided the case. It did so in Bush's favor and limited the recount that had been started by the Supreme Court of Florida. The United States Supreme Court, in deciding the case, decided it in a 4-3 split. All four of the justices who uh, took Bush's side were Republican appointees, and all three of the justices who took Gore's side were Democratic appointees. So that left uh, a lot of Democrats and a lot of other people uh, claiming that the United States Supreme Court was biased. Um, the final claim is sort of the 
king or the queen of all claims. It's a claim of policy. We'll be looking at how claims relate to one another uh, in the next couple of weeks. But now we're just getting um, our feet wet enough to uh, do an assignment or two this week. And a claim of policy involves action. Uh, it often is an assertion. It is an assertion about what should be done. Florida should stop the recount was a claim of policy that um, Bush advanced in the United States Supreme Court that was disputed by the Gore campaign. But these claims of policy don't always have to be, you know, grand policies such as the drinking age should remain at 21 or we should legalize marijuana for medical purposes or whatever. Um, they also can be something that would come up in conversation offhandedly even such as you should change your wireless carrier. You're not getting a signal in here. I always do. Well, you should get a new carrier. Um, that's a claim of policy. So those are the um, four kinds of claims and how they work in a very fundamental argument map works sort of like this. This is a, it's, it's a complex argument, but it's very broad brush. Um, claims all go to carry a resolution. If you, if you have several claims and um, they relate to a larger claim called a resolution, if you carry your claims, if you can get your audience to agree with you um, on all those claims, then you also carry that resolution. All a resolution is is sort of the big claim of your entire paper. I'll show you um, the one in the sample paper in a moment. So the left, the right side of the page is all about claims. On the left side of the page is the same information, but it's in question form. Um, issues are resolved in uh, claims um, being resolved. So an issue might be, what's the weather outside? Is it cloudy or sunny? And a claim that would attempt to resolve that issue is that it is cloudy. Um, so an issue basically is a claim in question form and a controversy is a resolution in question form. Uh, controversy is just sort of the, the grand issue of a more complex argument. So we'll be talking more about resolutions and claims than we will be about issues and controversies. Um, an example of uh, several claims uh, that support a resolution is in the sample paper for this assignment. The resolution you'll find there is that Americans should create civic life again by associating locally. This, you may realize now, is a claim of policy. It's got that word should in there. Um, and then there are several other claims that need to be carried for that resolution to be carried. The first is modern democracies, when the equality they foster is not balanced with civic engagement, could turn to despotism. It's a claim of fact. Um, it could also be a claim of definition. I'm never going to quiz you on these because like some other things in this class, it's more important that you have a feel for it. These are often gray areas. Um, it's, it's not exact enough for me to quiz you. Um, the second claim is a claim of definition. Individualism and a centralized state are two sides of the same coin. Um, that also could be a claim of judgment. I'm not sure about that either. Um, and um, then the third one, definitely a claim of policy. America should amend its constitution to provide for something like Jefferson's plan for dividing counties into wards. Um, those are all claims. And if I, all, if I carry all three, then I carry my resolution. That's it. And you'll be needing uh, some of this information um, in order to complete the uh, proposal that you'll be doing um, this week. Thank you.